This rocket launcher made from PVC and a bungee cord can launch rockets made from pool noodles up to 50 feet. To start this build, you'll need to head to your local hardware store to grab some PVC pipe and to pick up some ABS and PVC fittings. To start off, we'll want a length of two inch diameter PVC, a two inch slip to thread adapter, and a two inch to one half inch adapter, all in PVC. The projectiles for this whole contraption will be made of pool noodles, so we've got a couple of those lying around. I have a two inch by two inch by one and a half inch by one and a half inch ABS cross piece. Let's start by cutting our two inch diameter PVC pipe to one foot in length. Using some ABS to PVC cement, we'll attach our cross onto our two inch diameter pipe. Use some paper towel to wipe off any excess glue. Next, we have a two inch to one half inch adapter, which will fit into the other side of our ABS tube. At the other end of our two inch diameter PVC pipe, we want to add the two inch slip to thread adapter. This piece is smooth on one side and will fit right over our pipe, and on the other side is designed to take a two inch threaded pipe. Our green glue is specifically meant for combining the two different materials of our ABS and our PVC pipe. When we're combining PVC to other PVC, we want to use glue specifically made for that. These four pieces will make up part of the main body and the air chamber where pressure is built to launch our rocket. Using these two side pieces off of our ABS cross, let's add a handle for ease of use. We have two one and a half inch to three quarter inch adapters, which will allow us to go from the ABS plastic down to some standard three quarter inch PVC pipe. We also have these four PVC three quarter inch elbows, which will let us build a handle that wraps around our ABS cross piece. Once again, using our ABS to PVC cement, let's attach our two adapters. On both sides of this cross, we'll use some three quarter inch PVC to connect our pieces together. Short ones connecting onto the sides and one long piece that will act as our handle going across. I need four pieces of the three quarter inch PVC just over two inches long. We wanna cut the PVC handle at about nine and a quarter inches long. To be able to attach all of these pieces, we're going to do things in a bit of a strange order. I'll put the elbow on one side of our large handle and then affix that with the two small pieces of the three quarter inch pipe on one end. Another piece of three quarter inch pipe will be attached to the bottom and an additional piece will be used to connect two of our elbows into a sort of U shape. The U shape will go on last, fitting over both the long and the short pieces of the three quarter inch pipe at the same time. Aha! With the handle glued in place, we now have the main body of our pool noodle rocket launcher assembled. Let's move on to the plunger. The main body of our plunger will be one and a quarter inch PVC. There are two different lengths that we need to cut off of our one and a quarter inch pipe. One is one foot long and the other is two and a half inches. We have the PVC cut into two separate pieces because we're going to use a coupler and a cap as part of the plunger design. This plunger design is borrowed from YouTuber Nighthawk and Light, who has a similar pool noodle rocket launcher design. When I was trying to come up with a design for a large pool noodle rocket launcher, his design popped up and I was amazed at how similarly our ideas coincided. This rubber O-ring has a one and a half inch inner diameter and a one and seven eighths inch outer diameter. We're using this rubber O-ring because when it's pulled over a one and a quarter inch piece of PVC pipe, it makes a diameter that almost perfectly fits inside of a two inch pipe. The coupler and the cap will be used to hold it in place on the section of one and a quarter inch PVC. Using our PVC glue, let's attach first the coupler and then the cap to our small section of pipe with the O-ring in between them. With our coupler and cap attached around our O-ring, we can now attach that whole piece onto our one foot section of one and a quarter inch pipe. We've now made a plunger that fits very snugly into our two inch PVC body. We only want our plunger to go to about the end of the two inch piece of PVC, not entering the ABS cross piece. Let's grab a piece of our pool noodle and make a stopper that will remain inside the interior of our launcher. Our pool noodle is cut to the right length, but it's still a little bit too wide to fit nicely into the PVC. 
Let's cut out a small section of the middle that should still allow the two round pieces to fit together and be inserted into the tube. The two sections now have a much smaller diameter and still have enough of a hole down the middle that air should be able to flow easily. To ensure that air really can travel all the way down the length of this without being slowed down, let's use our X-Acto knife and hollow this out just a bit more. Nighthawk and Light had a really cool design on his channel and I liked it a lot, but there were a couple things that I wanted to change for this adaption. One is I wanted it to fire automatically, so I wanted to make this whole thing spring-loaded. The other change I wanted to make is that on his device, you had to draw back the plunger, add the pool noodle ammunition, and then fire it by pushing the plunger down. I wanted to be able to have the pool noodle on, draw back, and fire all in one go. To do that, we need to allow the air to flow in when we're pulling back, but be stopped when it's moving forward. So we need to have the air travel through the plunger and then be stopped by a one-way valve at the back. The design for this one-way valve is extremely similar to something Grant has made previously. We have a three-quarter inch male adapter, which on one side is a press fitting for three-quarter inch PVC and then reduces down in diameter so that it's narrower on the bottom than it is at the top. This O-ring fits perfectly down into the wider end of our adapter. This rubber stopper is wider than the O-ring at the top, but narrower at the bottom, which means it can fit about halfway down into it. The result is that any pressure coming from the wide end will push the stopper down into the O-ring and restrict the flow of the gas. Pressure coming from the narrow end will move the stopper away from the O-ring, allowing the gas to flow around it and into the system. If I try and blow into the narrow end, the air travels easily. But if I try and blow into the wide end, the stopper is forced up against the O-ring and doesn't go anywhere. Our connecting piece of 3 quarter inch PVC needs to be close enough that it will prevent the rubber stopper from moving far, but leave enough space that it can still move to let air through. Let's cut a 2 inch section of our PVC to complete our one-way valve. By itself, the PVC pipe may prevent the stopper from moving, but the stopper is actually able to fit into a piece of 3 quarter inch PVC with a little bit of pressure. So let's add another barrier onto the bottom of this piece of PVC in the form of a segment of nail crossing through from one side to the other. I've selected a nail and a drill bit that are the same diameter, so we'll drill a hole through our PVC and then fit our nail through, trimming off the excess. Our nail is almost the perfect width, well, let's use a file to take down the sharp edges to be sure that it will really easily fit inside the adapter. Now, even with the nail in place, our PVC pipe should fit smoothly into the adapter. Just like that, we have a one-way valve that only cost about $1.50 to build. Now, of course, our one-way valve is only going to make any difference if air can get down to it. Currently, our plunger is all stopped up so that no air can get past the O-ring. Let's drill a hole into the tip of our plunger so that air will travel down inside it and reach our air valve. We're going to want the elastic that powers our whole rocket launcher to pass behind the T and stay in place. Let's drill a small hole into the back of the T and install an eye bolt that will fit inside that we can let our elastic pass through to keep it from sliding off either side. We can now begin assembling the back end of our plunger. We'll also need one small section of 3 quarter inch PVC to connect our T to our adapter. The back of our plunger will have a 1 and a quarter inch coupler attaching to a 1 and a quarter to 3 quarters inch reducer. A small piece of 3 quarters inch PVC will attach a T. The T will be stopped on one side by a plug, and on the other side, we can add our one way valve. At this point, we should be able to attach our entire plunger assembly onto the body of our launcher. But before we do, it's still a little tough to slide this thing inside the launcher. The rubber grips the inside walls of the PVC pretty well, so let's add an oil as a lubricant. This liquid silicone should prevent it from binding. If you don't have silicone, you can use things like cooking oil or WD-40, but be aware that some oils will degrade the rubber seal over time. We can now thread our two adapters together, locking our plunger in place. The plunger moves easily and air is definitely pushed out the front. I have here a three foot bungee cord. Let's adapt this to give our launcher some spring power. Our elastic will wrap down through the eye bolt and then hook around both sides of our plastic tee using a couple of zip ties.
The last step to make it functional is to add a small piece of one half inch PVC onto the very front. Our pool noodle will fit over that and help guide our rockets. Let's cut a piece about 15 inches long off of this one half inch PVC pipe. Our elastic powered PVC pool noodle launcher is built. And at this point, what we need is some ammunition. We've got a few colors of pool noodles, a couple of sheets of craft foam, a foam football, this and our glue gun is all we're going to need to make our missiles. To start, let's grab a pool noodle and cut off a length 15 inches long. At this point, our tube is hollow and air can pass right through it, so we need a way to stopper that up. Once again, borrowing from Nighthawk and Light and his design of these similar noodles, let's cut off a strip of this craft foam, roll it up, and use that as a plug in our pool noodle. To add a little bit of weight and shape to our missile, let's cut off the front of this foam football where it has a circular diameter that's the same as our pool noodle. We can then glue that on to give it a nice point and some weight. At the other end of our missile, we're going to want to add some fins and we want them evenly spaced out. We can use more of our craft foam to make those fins. Adding a little bit of a twist into our fins should help stabilize our missiles in flight. With the fins attached, our missile is ready to fly. We now have our launcher and a few different missiles, and of course, both of those also can have a little bit of decoration done. I hit the tree. Guys, there's still more for you to see. The little box up at the top will transport you directly to our last video, and the box at the bottom will show you what YouTube thinks you should be watching next. And if you click this bomb here in the middle, you'll be subscribed to our channel so you'll never miss another video. Don't forget to ring that bell, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.